Moments ago, Chinese President Xi Jinping, as you can see here, landing in Moscow for his face-to-face -face meeting with President Putin. On the agenda, obviously, Ukraine. She says that he believes China is actively promoting peace talks, while Putin, who was in the Russian-occupied Ukrainian city of Mariupol over the weekend, says he welcomes China's, quote, readiness to make a meaningful contribution to the settlement of the crisis. The White House's John Kirby joins us now. Good morning, John. Are you expecting any tangible agreements to come out of this summit with Putin and Xi? Difficult to know, Caitlin. Uh, obviously, we're not part of these discussions, so uh, we'll see what these two leaders uh, actually come out and say at the end of this. I guess it's going to be a couple of days here of, uh, of their meeting and that agenda. So we'll see. Uh, but as you know, we've, we've been very, very uh, public about any concerns uh, about some sort of a ceasefire announcement right now. We all want to see peace. We all want to see this war end. It could end today if Mr. Putin did the right thing. But a ceasefire called right now would basically just ratify Russia's conquest and give Mr. Putin more time to re-equip and uh, retrain and, uh, and restart operations at a time and a place of his choosing. So if they call for a ceasefire, you believe Ukraine should and will reject that? Yes, we do, and we would uh, reject it as well. We think that that's an unacceptable outcome right now. Uh, obviously, we want the fighting to stop. We want the war to be over. And as I said, it could end today if Mr. Putin would do the right thing. But to call for a ceasefire right now basically ratifies what they've been able to grab inside Ukraine and gives them time and space uh, to prepare for future operations, and that's just not going to be acceptable. John, do you think this meeting could be a venue where they announce that China may start providing weapons to Ukraine or to Russia to use in Ukraine? We don't believe it's in China's best interest to do that. We, we, can't, uh, we, we can't envision how they would think that it's in, in their best interest to help Mr. Putin continue to slaughter more innocent Ukrainians. So we don't want to see that. Again, we'll, we'll see what these leaders come out with and uh, what they say at the end of these uh, discussions. Uh, we're going to watch this very, very closely. Again, we have communicated privately to the Chinese. We've certainly communicated it publicly uh, that that would not be an outcome that's to the betterment, not only of China and their interests, but certainly to the Ukrainian people and to the whole idea of peace. What does it say to you that after the International Criminal Court issued that arrest warrant for Putin, that A, she still showed up in Russia, clearly did not deter that visit, but also you saw Putin over the weekend in Mariupol in all of these other cities? I think you have to, to your first question, I think you got to keep this relationship in some sort of context here. Uh, these are two nations who chafe uh, and bristle at the idea of U.S. leadership or U.S. influence around the world. Uh, they, don't, they don't like uh, playing by the rules uh, of the, that the world order has in place, uh, and they want to challenge U.S. leadership. This is a marriage of convenience, not of affection. These are two countries that don't have uh, a heck of a whole lot of trust between one another, uh, but they find common cause in pushing back on the West and pushing back on uh, American leadership. So again, we'll see what they decide to do uh, when they come out with this. Now, as for Mr. Putin's visit to Mariupol, uh, Mariupol uh, is far away from uh, the front lines of the fighting in the South and in the East. Uh, uh, it was a convenient uh, excuse for him uh, to go in advance of Xi's visit to show that he's still the commander in chief, that he's still in charge, and that his military still has uh, uh, occupied territory inside Ukraine. Uh, there's no doubt uh, that uh, that he could see for himself, or we would hope that he would see for himself, how badly his military is actually doing, where the fighting is actually occurring, and most of that is right up now in the in the Donbas near a town called Bakhmut. The White House wanted President Xi to also speak with President Zelensky to get the Ukrainian perspective yeah. in this. Any indication that's going to happen? We haven't seen any confirmation of it. Obviously, President Xi would be the one to announce that if he's going to do it, but we absolutely have been suggesting it for quite some time, and we'd love to see that happen. I mean, if you're going to go to Moscow, and you're going to sit down for three days with President Putin, and you're going to get his perspective on a war that he started, and that he could finish today, you ought to pick up the phone at the very least and talk to President Zelensky and get the Ukrainian perspective here. What we've been saying from the very beginning, uh, if this comes down to some kind of negotiated settlement of some sort in some place at some time, it's got to be nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. So Ukraine has got to be central to those discussions. Their perspectives have to be heard uh, and respected. So we absolutely want President Xi to reach out and, and get a little bit of the views and perspective uh, of Ukraine here. It's been about a week since President Biden said he was going to speak to President Xi soon. Is that call been scheduled yet, John? It hasn't been scheduled, Caitlin, but the president uh, very much wants to have another conversation with President Xi. It's really important that we keep these lines of communication open between the United States and China, the most consequential bilateral relationship in the world. The president wants to keep those lines open. We'll do that. And he'll have a call with President Xi at the appropriate time. 
what is the appropriate time? Because he said back in mid-February, after the U.S. downed that surveillance balloon, that he would speak to him soon. He said last week he'd speak to him soon. So as the U.S. tried to schedule the call and the Chinese have been unwilling, or what's going on here? No, nah, there's there's been no logistics. There's been no uh, there's been no setting it up. Uh, we uh, we maintain that we're going to have a, a another discussion with President Xi. The president wants to do that. Wants to keep those lines open. And at the appropriate time, we'll reach out and uh, and we'll see if we can get a call on the schedule. These are two men that also know each other for quite some time when they were both vice presidents of their respective countries. They had a good meeting in Bali, a good discussion. Uh, we'd like to continue that discussion. We'd like to uh, make sure that this bilateral relationship is serving not only the best interests of the American people, uh, but also the, the world. And the, this, this is a relationship that needs to be handled in a responsible, mature way. We want to get back to that. But we're just going to have to wait and, uh, and do that at the right time. Speaking of open lines of communication, we're seeing North Korea continue to fire off projectiles. Is it still accurate yeah. to say there's been no contact between the Biden administration and North Korea? Not for lack of trying and not for lack of interest, Caitlin. We, we maintain that we would still, uh, without precondition, uh, be willing to sit down and, uh, with, with the North Korean regime and try to find a, a diplomatic way uh, to reduce the nuclear tensions on the peninsula and to see the verifiable denuclearization uh, of, uh, of North Korea. But they have yet to show any interest in that whatsoever, any communication whatsoever. Quite the contrary, as you rightly noted, no, they're firing off ballistic missiles now here, largely in a reaction to U.S. and uh, ROK, uh, Republic of Korea, exercises that we're conducting right now. In fact, I think those exercises are wrapping up. All right, John Kirby, thanks for your time this morning. Joining us now from Taiwan, CNN senior international correspondent Will Ripley. Will, hello. Um, what should we expect to see today in this meeting between Xi and Putin? Well, certainly on the surface, it's going to be quite a lavish affair. This is an official state visit going on for three days. And I bet Vladimir Putin is very happy to see Xi Jinping. I mean, this is his best friend in the world right now, considering, you know, the you know potential to be tried on war crimes charges, uh, you know, condemnation by the West, you know, growing allegations of, of just, you know, barbaric behavior with him at the helm. And yet you have the Chinese president showing up, talking about, you know, working with Putin to safeguard the international order, a journey of friendship, cooperation and peace. Uh, it, you know, it, it's it's it just really it's so thick. You know, you could slice it with a knife. Uh, and yet this is what, you know, the Russian public, the Chinese public, this is what they're being fed. And this and so this buildup of this this no limits partnership between these two. Again, you know, she continues just to really put so much, uh, you know, of his, of his own credibility, really, in this relationship with Vladimir Putin. Now, the question that we need to, to see if it will be answered publicly or if it'll come out, you know, later is whether they talk about lethal weapons, mm -hmm. which Putin needs because his troops are running out of ammunition and other things. And will China be willing to give Russia the weapons that it would need uh, that could actually turn turn things around for them on the ground, potentially. This is the big concern. And also this Chinese peace plan that, that she is going there touting. Uh, basically, Ukraine says this plan needs to begin with a Russian withdrawal. But yeah. what China is calling for is for Russia to basically be given the land that they've already taken. Yeah, and notable, given that John Kirby said earlier, even if China does publicly propose a ceasefire once again, he, they, the U.S. believes Ukraine should reject it, and he said the U.S. will reject it as well. Yeah, it's it's th these are two men, two strong men up against the West, and yeah. uh, with each visit, with each you know, the, each side just digging in their heels, it's really uh, pretty troubling for a lot of people watching mm -hmm. the direction of, of of these two polar opposites in the world right now. All right, Will Ripley in Taiwan for us this morning. Will, thank you very much. Appreciate you joining us.